Hey, Goo. What's up, baby? How much trouble you think the Niners are in at two and three? Seventeen game season, couple couple tough losses. I'm right behind the great Richard Sherman, and it's not about the two and three. It's it, it's what's going into leading them into the two and three. So you ask me a question, I'm gonna go Drew Brees. I'm at a nine. I'm at a nine, Donnie. I am at a nine, and everything is is involved in that uh, that goulash that gives me to spit out a nine to you. It's the injuries. It's the unknown of when the guys are coming back. Now, I don't know. I went in the lab last night, watched oh. the game again under your premise. Did they win? They lost. Ah. Brock was just doing it. It wasn't bad. You just felt like he was doing too much. But Baldy joined Bonte and Shasky. And even the national pundits, you know, I don't know what to think about this team. Are, are guys not getting open? All of a sudden, Baldy came and joined him. Stanley, I brought him up. He had said the Niners' identity right now is they're slow. And I'm just like, how the hell did this happen? And then we got news out of New York this morning that Robert Sala, you know, who used the Niner defensive coordinator position to parlay that into a head coaching job, has got fired. We'll get into A-Rod. He's a buster. But at the end of the day, I don't know what to make of this team. And if Sala came back, which we know he's not, does he have the horses that he had? When he left. So I'm sitting here like Arizona game was in their hand. They had they blew that. And that's two games in a row they've blown. But I don't know what to I don't know when it's going to get better, Stiney, if it's going to get better. I'm trying to figure out whether this team is is really good, but they just haven't played well, or they're not as good as we thought they were. One of the things that I always think, Goo, is the a sign of a I don't want to say a bad team. Mm-hmm. But a sign of a non-successful team to me is always when it's a different thing every game that gets you beat. Different thing. All right. And that's the way I feel like the Niners are right now. They're just, when when their defense is good enough, their offense is not good enough. When their offense has been good enough, their defense can't get a stop. The special teams hasn't been great. And so I feel like every game of those three losses – it's been something else. And usually, you know, usually this team's a lot more buttoned up than it has been the first five games of the year. And I'm I'm just looking at some of these names. Go ahead. And, man. and we I know Andre we're get, Campbell. I know well no. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. I'm looking at the big names. Purdy, Ayuk, Bosa, Trent, Ward, Warner. Um you know, how many of those guys have really delivered this year consistently? Mm. As good as Purdy's been, he's played five games, and I think we can all say, well, you know, the Vikings wasn't a great game. He, he, he was okay. And then Sunday against the Cardinals might have been his worst game of the year. And the reality of the situation is they might not be good enough to overcome a so-so game from their quarterback. And in the past, as long as you weren't making mistakes, you were going to be fine. But yeah. they're they're making mistakes, and they're not buttoned up. No, I love it, Stani. And again, it's, kind of, it's rather confusing because, again, I'm looking and searching for answers, and sometimes I can't even believe I'm posing the question. We talked about this team in the offseason, and I still believe it, but it's yet to be seen that they got weaponry. They can withstand an injury to their Steph Curry, which is uh, Christian McCaffrey. But, you know, I don't know what the identity of this team is. And it seems like now the identity is they're going to let number 13 Brock Purdy drop back and – you, you, you know, I don't know if he's got a chip on his shoulder, Stiney, and I talked about this the other day about the Dink and Duncan reputation that he had, and, you know, that was a myth. But right now it looks like they have no identity. And in a game where the the weather, you know, was 100 degrees and you got a home game against a, a lesser opponent in the Arizona Cardinals and you only give your running back, Jordan Mason, the ball 14 times, that's not Kyle Shanahan-like to me. And it has me on Tuesday mornings, Donnie, thinking about, d- does Kyle know what the identity is? Is that at home with Christian McCaffrey? Because I don't know, and every game is its own entity, but it seems like each game they're trying to do something different, and I'm putting it at the doorstep of Kyle. But those guys you mentioned, outside of Fred Warner, who was playing on one leg, you know, Stiney, and the arm tackling, 
I just don't get it. The Niners, to me, were led by a bone crushing defense that would make sixty minutes of it would make sixty minutes of hell for an opposing quarterback. And all of a sudden, d- 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 hey, I won't even call out any, as a collective. This defense has been Swiss cheese. My favorite's Pepper Jack, but it's been Swiss cheese, Donnie. And if that doesn't improve, oh boy. Well, that's the that's the question I'm trying to ask myself. Is it going to improve? And if so, by how much? Because it's got to take a big step forward, I think. But that's real. I, you know, I'm I'm looking at Brock Purdy. I'm looking at the 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 big names on this team, and let's throw Warner out. Well, then okay, the quick right on the table before yeah. you go. On the defensive side of the ball, you got one other big name, well, who, and that's who? 97. Hargrave's gone. Yeah. So are we really? Should we really be surprised? Because we were sold, it, guys were going to step up, and I'm not coming down the road of Lenore and Ward, but they run the secondary, Stani, and there that that unit in itself is getting had. Yeah, I'd, I'm again. I'm trying to figure out what's going on here with the Niners, and I think they are too. And one of the things I think that's going on, and it's hard to put into words, but I do think the last couple of years is catching up to them. Oh, wow. And I think mm. it's I think it's I think it's mostly a mental thing, but I feel like they thought they were you know they were one of the best teams in the NFL the last two years. They didn't get it done. They came back this year. They had a training camp where everything was disjointed, and it's so funny now because when we were watching them at training camp and paying attention, and know that Trent wasn't there and Ayuk wasn't practicing. And McCaffrey wasn't practicing. It felt like we were all saying, you know what, they haven't had a great camp. They might not get off to a great start. Well, they haven't gotten off to a great start. But the problem is, is the schedule's been pretty soft at the beginning of the year. Man. And now it starts toughening up a little bit. And I think at this point, you figured you'd probably be at least three and two, maybe four and one. So you'd have some wiggle room, but they don't have any wiggle room right now. Yeah, Stani, and again, it's not the Michael Jordan. It's not the two and three record. It's just not to me. It's it's what you just talked about. You and I are older. Evans Young, single, ready to mingle, right? If he goes out five days a week and goes out that sixth day, you know what? He's going to have a ball, but guess what he's going to be, Stani? Tired. Tired from the five previous days. And what I think I omitted and forgot and assumed is this Niner team during that four-year run, four straight trips to the SC Championship game, one Super Bowl, there's collateral damage in that. And it started with McCaffrey out of nowhere physically not being ready. So right then and there, partner, you know, I'm saying that load that he's carried Caught up to him. So he's not even been available. Then you talk about produce. You talk about uh, Trent and Ayuk. I thought they were going to be fresh because they were not practicing. So I don't know if Ayuk is not getting open. I know we got Ross Tucker at 11. I just want to see what it, you, you, you know, just his thoughts from afar. But Trent Williams hasn't had his best year. But boy, I just don't know what you can tell a Niner fan to lead them to believe defensively we'll fix it and then offensively we'll fix or even identify why we have a red zone problem because that's part of the reason you're getting beat. You're leaving four points. They left 20 points on the field just Sunday. One of six in the red zone. 888-957-9570 is the number. And one of the things... I've been talking to Niner fans about the last couple of days after this loss is just, you know, where do you think this team is? Have the expectations of this che- team changed? You're two and three right now. Uh, it's a 17 game schedule, but if I were to ask 49er fans, how much trouble do you guys think you're in right now? What would your answer be at 888-957-9570? Uh, gurus at a nine. I think yesterday I said a four. Richard gonna, Sherman's at a 10, I'm if gonna, you care. Yeah, I'm going to move it to a five. Mm. So and here, here's the here. thing. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. If they're four and one, I'm probably at a one or two. But they're two and three, which to me is about a five. But the reason they're at five and not at seven is because I'm looking at the division. 
they could still win the division. They win tomorrow. Uh, they win Thursday night against Seattle. They're tied for first place. All they don't. All the, all they're missing is a couple tiebreakers. But are they going to turn it around? And the one thing about this team is it's something different each week that's gotten them beat. So what is the biggest issue with this team, and how much trouble do you think they're in, or do you still think it's you know it's early enough that? This thing can settle down and they can start winning games. 